I'm not as good man. Thank you very much indeed. Brilliant. Right, I wonder, what are you committed to? What are you committed to? Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's husband, wife, partner, children. Or maybe it's a thing. A passion of yours that's more than just a hobby and it gives you a sense of life and joy and freedom when you do that thing. Or maybe it's a goal you have. Maybe a goal to lose that weight or to be able to run that far or to be able to save for that holiday. You're committed to achieving that and your actions day by day show it. I found some jokes this week about commitment. I know it's always dangerous to share jokes, but I'm a dad of six, so if they come out as dad jokes, that's absolutely fine. I thought I'd share three about commitment this morning. First one says, I shouldn't have bought balloons from a salesman with commitment issues. There were no strings attached. I thought it was quite good, actually. That was quite good. The best one is the third one, don't worry. Secondly, we've been trying to organize a fear of commitment workshop, but we can't seem to nail down a date. Third one, doctor. You might have a phobia of marriage. Do you think you have the symptoms? Patient, can't say I do. Doctor, yes, that's the main one. <laughs> to think about that one a little bit. In our church, we launched four, we launched a few weeks ago a vision where we stated four values. Four things that we pray will characterise our life together as a church. Four things that will guide our actions and decisions each day. And one of those is the value of commitment. The value of commitment. Commitment to God and commitment to others. Murray, I've lost control of the slides here, so I'll let you do something at the back if you'd like to. And this morning, I'd like to begin by exploring this theme of commitment together. Our Bible reading from Matthew chapter 22 is actually all about commitment. A man comes to Jesus and he asks this question. He says to Jesus, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? He's asking a question that I think all of us ask deep down in various ways. The question that says, if I could only do one thing, what should it be? Or what's the most important thing I can do with my life? Or if I were to give myself just to one thing, what would it be? We want to know the answer because we know we want to make a difference with who we are, and we all know we have limited time and energy. So what really matters? What does Jesus say in response? Next slide, please. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, Jesus says. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. Do you notice the commitment that's implicit in that response? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. It's not a half-hearted response, but a dedicated, devoted action towards God. That involves giving our entire life to him, in love. And when Jesus uses the word heart there, in biblical language, the heart is not referring to the center of our emotions in the way that we might often use it today. In the Bible, the heart always refers to the innermost, animating center of everything we do. It's the driving force behind all our actions. Commitment to God and commitment to others to give ourselves to others as we would like them to give themselves to us. This is the most important thing to do in life, according to Jesus. If you look up definitions of commitment in the dictionary, you get things about it being a firm decision to do something. It involves dedication and loyalty and devotion, that's like it's sticking to the choice that you've made. It involves a promise to a certain course of action. <coughs> it requires effort and discipline, hanging in there for the long haul. That's what commitment's all about. And we see such things, don't we, 
in our own lives, in the commitments we make to other people. Think of the commitment of marriage. Marriage would be the biggest commitment we make to someone else. Where in declarations we promise to love and comfort and honour and protect and be faithful to our spouse. Or in the vows we promise to love and cherish them, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. And when they give rings to each other, they make a beautiful promise to give all that they are to the other person. Commitment oozes through every word of the marriage service because it's the greatest promise we can make to another person. Even in our Thanksgiving service this morning, there are themes of commitment. Gavin and Matilda committing to love Suneva, to care for her, to do the best for her as they raise her. Family and friends who join today, making promises to support her and support Matilda and Gavin in this task. All the themes that sum up what commitment's all about are in those words of Jesus, to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, all our minds, all our soul, and to love our neighbour as ourselves. God asks us to give everything to him. Next slide, please. Because he is God. He is the author of all. Move on slide on, please. The sustainer of all. And the one in whom everything finds its meaning. In the words of Revelation chapter 4, you alone are worthy, God, to receive glory and honour and power. And when Jesus speaks in Matthew, it's God speaking. Because Jesus is, of course, fully God in human form. That's what the Bible claims. He's Lord over everything. And if he's Lord, then his Lordship extends over everything. For unless Jesus is Lord of all, then he's really no Lord at all. So I'm going to ask up front this morning, where is Jesus in your life? Is he Lord of your life? Does he have the place he demands and deserves as God? Because he actually asks every one of us whether we will bow the knee to him, whether we will love him with all our hearts, soul, and mind. If you've never done that, then maybe this morning, on this occasion of a Thanksgiving, would be a great time to start as we reflect on what the most important thing in life is. If you have done that at some point, Maybe you're here every week as part of church. Is he still Lord? And is he Lord of all? Or is there an area of our life that we still hold on to and we won't let Jesus be in charge of? Because we're for honest, actually, we're still in charge of that bit. Can I say, Jesus isn't a minifigure, like one of those little Lego minifigures that we can carry around in our pockets and bring out when we need him. He's not a talisman that we hold on to when we're in trouble. He's not a genie that we let out when we need help. <coughs> He's the Lord of all, to whom we give all, because the Bible claims he's worthy of it all. It's a high standard. But then why would we expect any less if we're talking about God? But it's lived out through grace through the forgiveness that we thought about at the beginning of our service, through the acceptance and the unconditional love of God for all the times we fall short. As I draw this to a close this morning, uh, next slide please. I'm going to say that God asks us to commit ourselves to him because he's so deeply committed to us. Final slide. He's made us. He knows us inside out. He cares for us. He loves us. We sang about it in our second song. He made us. He made our world simply because he loves us. And the story of the Bible is of a God who doesn't give up on us, even when we might give up on him. He keeps acting and working to bring us back to him again and again and again, because he loves us. For God so loved the world, John tells us, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
God didn't wait for us to have it together before showing his love. The Apostle Paul says God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know this morning where you are with God. Maybe you think God doesn't care about you or at least is indifferent to you. Maybe you know God loves you. Maybe things are happening in your life at the moment or your experience that make you doubt that God could really love you. But can I say nothing can be further from the truth? Because God is committed to you. He loves you. And he showed it so clearly through the giving of Jesus for you. And in response to that love, he asks us to do one thing, to love him with all our hearts, all our soul, and all our mind. So will we commit ourselves to God, the God who is committed to us? Well, we're going to sing one more time. A song in response before we have some prayers. And it's the hymn, When I survey the wondrous cross that demands my soul, my life, my all. Please do sing.